glad these roll dry. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Well, welcome to God's Hand Ministry. I am recovered. My name is Trish Karanga, and I am here with Kelly Elder. And we are recovered through the blood, blood of Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Hello, beloved of God. Hello, beloved of God. <laughs> so I'm so thankful for sis that she agreed to come in and, and do another another testimony, really. Yes. Yes. And so today she has agreed to talk about her first marriage, mm -hmm. and then um, wherever Holy Spirit leads, we shall go. Amen? Amen. All right, beloved. I'm going to let you. Well, I'll just say this: there, there, there are many young ladies, and some that aren't so young, yeah. who I believe have are battling right now, or have battled with this exact same thing, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, Holy Spirit showed me that, that, that this testimony, this, this, this video will bless so many people. And praise God, it's all glory to God how everything works out in the end. Praise God. Yes, so yes. I'm just going to let our beloved elder speak and um, whatever Holy Spirit says, we'll do. Amen. Amen. All right, girl. It's okay. up to you. So when I was 15, 15. I, I met my first husband. Okay. Uh, he was 17. Um, just the normal, you know, little, you know, go out to eat at Wendy's or something, you know, nothing <laughs> spectacular, nothing like that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to ask first, how'd you meet him? We met through a mutual friend. It was, um, my friend that I knew from school, and I went over to her house, and he was there with her brother. Okay. And we met that way. Okay. And nothing, it wasn't nothing, nothing. Yeah, it wasn't that special. <laughs> okay. But he was there. Okay. Yes, so that's yes. how you met him. Yes. All right. So, um, so we dated for about a year, a little over a year. 16, found out I was pregnant with my first child. Okay. Um, when I found out I was pregnant with the first child, I was four and a half months pregnant before wow. I found out. Well, maybe it was denial, but I was four and a half months pregnant. And... Everything was good. Everything was okay. Um, and then at 17, I had him. I had okay, just turned so let 17. Me ask, okay. How did you feel about being 16? Being 16 and pregnant, I was scared. But my support system was so huge. And so they were, they was just wonderful. My mom, my dad, you wow. know. Wow, praise God. Yeah, my grandparents, they were all very, very supportive. Wow. And when I told my dad, he was like, just don't quit high school and i was like okay and i quit high school i ended up quitting high school i did i did um so you had him at 17 at 17 i had him um pretty smooth sailing pretty easy labor no drugs wow I I you go girl I wow I guess it, it probably most of it started um, when Austin was born. It was more of you know him going out doing things without me. Of course, I couldn't go anywhere. I had you know we had one vehicle, and I couldn't go. And you know I had a baby, so I didn't go very many places. Every once in a while we'd go together, but it wasn't very often. And he would say things like, "Well, I'm going to go to the store and get this," which was just right down the street. But he'd be gone for hours at a time. Gotcha. And, um, and his, his family was um, always trying to tell me how to raise my baby. I mean, I was young, you know, but sure. I did have a mother. So, you know, she could, she was very good at, you know, helping me out. But she never told me what to do. She would give me suggestions, things like that. But his family was very, um, um, I'm going to say bossy and controlling and, especially when it comes to Austin. Austin was their first baby since my ex-husband. Okay. So, now, did you all live with them, or did you all live on your own? Whenever I was 17, we, they had um, they had houses on a, on their land. They had a house that was empty. That his, It was his great-grandma's. Okay. And then it was his grandma's house, and his mom lived, was behind that one. And then his aunt was over here behind the grandma and grandpa. So even though you didn't live with them, they were all around yes. you. Yes. Okay. And then your family was 
they were with this with this was in Bradfordsville. Okay. I moved to Bradfordsville. My family, my mom was in Lebanon. Okay. My dad was at the time he was in Danville. Okay. Um when I was seventeen, I moved out, moved into that house, the great grandma's house with him and our son. Um I had started working. Um, I would do um, whatever I could. He didn't. He didn't work a lot, so he could be or his mom would watch him or my mom would watch him, things like that. If he would watch him, I would usually get phone calls saying, "I need you to come home because he's crying and I can't." And I'm like, so I lost a lot of jobs that way. But um, with living in this house, we had no rent. We didn't have to pay any. We had no bills, nothing like that. Wow. But I felt with the no bills and no rent, there was um, a trade-off of my family wasn't allowed up to come visit. Nobody that I knew was allowed to come visit. It was nobody was allowed at the house. It was, and they were like right there, so they could see if anybody came. And um, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that. That's well, that's pretty much the way it was. So very controlling. Very it's not controlling. your house. No, it's not my house. No, it's not my house. Not at all. Okay. So let's see. Here, so that continued on for. Um, I think well, when Austin was about a year old, I had found out that he had had an affair. He had had cheated on me. Um, and I don't know if I was. I think I was like in a place of. I can't leave because I have a son with him, and you just you just don't want to do that. You just you just don't. And so I dealt with that. Um, it was hard. Um, probably. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Well, his aunt and them had moved out of this house, so we ended up moving from the grandma's house to the aunt's house, because they ended up moving to Lebanon, and we lived there for about a year and I was still dealing with him going out, um, not participating in anything, not with, you know, Austin, nothing. Well, I had decided that whether he wanted to or not, I had decided that I wanted to have another child. I was about... So even though he wasn't participating, right? And I think what you said, you were working more than he was. Mm -hmm. He was sort of working. Every once in a while he would for a couple months at a time or a week at a time. or So he didn't have a steady job, but you no. did Yes. as the mama. So yes. what was the relationship with you? I mean, were, were you in love with him? Were you? I thought I was. I really, really thought I was because whenever... I would find out he had cheated on me. I mean, I was just devastated and I would just, you know, cry and just, uh, and I didn't tell anybody. I mean, I wouldn't tell anyone that, you know, what he had done. Because that's embarrassing. Why would you do that? Sure. I mean, not gonna, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. And um, <clears throat> so I decided I wanted another child. So I told him, I'm like, look, I want another baby. Don't really care if you want one or not. But I do, and I'm the one taking care of Austin, so this is what's going to happen. And he's like, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> <laughs> I was, at the time, I was on birth control, and I had went to the doctor, and they told me, you know, it could be anywhere. I mean, you can get pregnant immediately, or it could be up to 18 months. Well, I got a pregnant. I got pregnant immediately. Of course you did. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> About a month after that conversation, I was oh, pregnant wow. with my okay. second. And um, so I got pregnant with him. And while I was pregnant with him, he had cheated again. Oh, and at this it. time, I was probably about seven months pregnant. And it was, again, devastating. I was just, it was, it was bad. Did you talk to anybody at this time? No. No? No. So you just dealt with it all no. by yourself? I did. Oh, I did. I would talk to him, but sure, he was but no. I'm not. But no best friend. No, no. no. Mom, I, no I didn't nobody. have friends at that time. I had no friends. No. They wouldn't allow you to have friends mm -hmm. come over. Mm -hmm. I had no friends. Didn't speak to any that I had from like school or before him or any. No, I didn't talk to anybody. So, no. so at this point, you would quit school. 
Yes. To I work. Did. I had quit school when I was 16. Yes. To work. Yes. Or to take care of yes. Austin and then work and... Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, no wonder you were kind of closed off from, from everybody. Yes. Okay. And we only had one vehicle, so it was hard for me. Like, I would go to work, come home, and then I would stay, and then he would leave. And he'd be gone for hours at Go a time. to work or just leave? Just leave. Just leave. Yeah. So just leave. There was, yeah. So, I became pregnant with Cameron. Found out he had cheated again. Um, at this point, it was, I had pretty much, um, I'm trying to think of the word, kind of went numb to everything like I was just living is all I was doing I was just living I was taking care of my kids working doing what I had to do just you know can provide to do and he was going off doing his thing and if I could get him to stay home he would sleep the whole time because hmm. he just couldn't he just could not deal with us he just didn't want to have any he was not mean he was not an alcoholic he was not a drug addict he was not anything. He was not mean to me. He did not yell at me. He did not hit me. He did not do anything like that. He was just so selfish that he just could not deal with other people, such as a wife and two kids. I'm sorry, I need to back up because when I was 18, we got married. Okay. And he was 20. I was 18 when he was 20. Austin was about two at this time. So did he want to get married? Well, we were like... You want to get married? He's like, okay, sure, let's get married. So we did. So you did. Okay. Like, okay. So he didn't object to it. No. No. And wasn't forced into it. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like, you know, my, maybe by yeah. family or whatever, mm -hmm. like you guys no. should. Okay. So no, no family never said anything about it. You know, as long as we were together and we had Austin, it, everything was good. Okay. Because there was at one time, there was one time when Austin was about a year old, he, would, he kicked me out. He was messing around with some girl and he had kicked me out and his family was so mad at him because I left. I left and went with my mom's house with Austin. And he was just, they were just so angry and just, they just couldn't believe he had done that. And it was just because, and it wasn't because of me, it was because of Austin. It had nothing to do with who. Oh, they yeah. wanted their grandbaby. Yeah, they wanted Austin there. But anyways, probably a week later we reconciled and I moved back and everything was good again for five minutes yes yes so I had Cameron and I, no drugs ooh, ooh. Wow. Again, I know girl. Sis, I know girl. you're a rock star I know. well when I when I went into labor with Cameron it was like 8 o'clock in the morning and I had him by 20 minutes after 10 that morning that same morning so I mean it was like an hour from waking up to getting the paperwork done in the ER to get into the room and I'm like please give me something please give me something they're like nope it's too late Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it was good. It was all good. Sis. Everything went. Wow. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, that's an hour and 20 minutes. Way too long to yes. have. <laughs> yes. But he was there. He was there for both of the births. He was there, and he stayed with me at the hospital. Um, he would leave every once in a while. Um, but I, I feel like at that time, you know, he was getting a lot of attention. You know, he had a, he had a kid, so, you know, he was getting some attention for that. And, uh. Um, I had ended up, let's see, when I was about 21, I think, I started working for his family. They had a staffing business here in town, and I started working for his family, and um, that's when a lot of the manipulation had started with his family, and um, more controlling. Yeah, because um, now you work for them. Yes. So that was more claws into me that they had, and and it, and it, at this point I was getting to where I would say something about you know things that he was doing, where he would leave and not come home, or you know messing around on me and things like that. And I'm like, oh, well, you know how he is. He loves to talk. He's just out talking. I'm like, for God, I hate your son. Wow. So they didn't want to believe. Oh no. Not that that's what he, even though he'd already got caught doing it yes. once and you moved out. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, I'd worked for them for, we went on vacations together. We'd go to like Tennessee, things like that. All of us. And, um, it was, it was pretty good vacations. 
And then there was the last one that we went to, and it was, I was just so numb, and I was just kind of done. I was, I was about 20, 24, and it was our last vacation. Cameron was about three years old. Austin would have been about seven. Wow. And then we, we had went on vacation, and we got home, and I was just, I was just kind of just done. I mean, I just got to the point I didn't care where he was anymore. Didn't care where he went. I'm just, it was just me and my kids, and that was it, you know. And then, so I dealt with, I was living like that for about a year. I was just kind of went so, through the motions. So this whole seven years of being together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You you were a mom. Mm -hmm. Were you were you really like have a wife role really, or or were you all really just two people living separate lives? Pretty much, yeah. We really were. I mean, it was. I had a wife role whenever he needed a wife for something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For, right. Or for you know. That's whenever I had the wife role. But I mean, because I would tell him, you know, I would be, I was like his mother, you can't spend money like this because we have to have, we have to feed our kids. You cannot, but I mean, he would just go and just blow. Well, so your to, money was his money. Oh yeah. Cause he didn't work. Right. And he would just go spend money and, and yes. so you had to work more. Yes. And it didn't matter if the kids needed anything. So was he really a, a, a dad to the kids? I mean, um, no, no, he really wasn't. No, he really, really wasn't. Um, he was, <clears throat> he wasn't, he didn't really play with them. He didn't really do anything. I've seen him once. He had, um, Austin had done something. He just walked up home, smacked him in the back of the head. And I'm like, okay. Wow. Okay, okay. Because at this point, when Austin was two, he found out he was blind in one of his eyes. <clears throat> in anything. You can't hit him or nothing. He's supposed to be wearing glasses. You know, as soon as that one eye goes, he's, he's completely blind. He can't even see anything. So um, he had hit him that one time, and I was like, mm, no. But that was then a few years later. When I was 24, um, that was whenever I was just kind of going through the motions, being the mom, working, just letting him do whatever. I'm just whatever. I don't even care anymore. Just go do your thing, and and I was I was miserable. I was just so miserable because I'm like I'm stuck. I am stuck in this forever. I'm never gonna get out. His family is. I mean, they will take my kids. I, this is what I thought because sure. they had put all this stuff in me. You know, they were they're gonna take my kids. They have this money, so they have the power. They can do whatever they want. They can you know they can take my kids from me. So I did that for about a year when I was about 25. I was still 24. I just turned 24. I, I'm sorry. I was getting ready to turn 25, but I was still 24 at the time. There was an incident where I was going to be late for work. At this time, I was getting both of my kids up for, I was getting Austin up and getting Cameron up at like five o'clock in the morning. And I would take them to daycare and daycare. Austin would get on the bus and Cameron would stay because he was, you know, three. He wasn't in school yet. And this one morning I had got up late and I was going to, you know, and I, Asked, I woke him up and I said, can you please get, at this time he was working, and okay. he had, but I think he was off this day. But I asked him, I said, can you please get up with the kids and take them to school and daycare? I said, I'm running late. I have to get to work. And he told me, no, hmm. I'm not. So I was late. I did get my kids up, got them ready, got them out the door, and I was, I was late. Um, and that was what, the that straw was that broke that was it. back. I was like, I am, I'm done. I'm Yay. Not, I'm not going to do this anymore. Praise God. I said, if I'm going to do it by myself, I'm going to do it by myself. Amen. So, um, so, actually, I had went to his aunt and cousin and told them first. I said, I want to separate from him. I was like, and I was crying because I was working for them. I was like, you know, please don't fire me. I have to have this job. You know, I've got these kids. And they're like, oh, you know, everything's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. It's okay. We'll, 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 we'll get you through it. And I was like, okay. So I ended up telling him, well, and then everybody's like, okay, well, so, so of course, behind my back, it was one thing, and to my face, it sure. was, you know, loving me, kissing me, hugging me, and everything was okay, and they were just coming after me, full force. <clears throat> wow. So, um, we had lived in an apartment right down the street, right down the road on Council Highway, and I moved out, moved in with my mom, Yay. and he was 
doing all these things like um he was coming over to moms to see the kids really i knew better than that he wasn't he was not coming over to see the kids sure um he was making sure i was where i was supposed to be um and um what else do i want to talk about so you're living at the apartment you moved out with your mom yep and then he started coming over he did and he was also trying to you know reconcile with me you know he's like i'll do better i'll do all this stuff and i'm like this has been we've been together for almost nine years and you're just now trying i'm like no and it was it was it was bad um he had ended up calling cps on me twice cps of course came and they were like we haven't found, we're not finding anything. We don't know what they're talking about. And they're like, and I was like, well, can I, Miss Beck, can I like press charges or something to make them stop so they'll quit? She's like, no, we can't tell you who actually done it. Of course, we already knew who done it. Sure. Who it was, but if they do it one more time, the third time, then you can take them to court and they have to tell you who's done it. And then you can go for harassment charges or whatever. And I found this out. So I went to him and I told him, you do this one more time. I said, and they're not going. Then they don't find anything. I said, I get to press charges against you. It would never happen again. They never called CPS. Praise again, God, right? Praise yes. God, sis. Yes. So, and at this time, I was going through. I was, I was finally without him. But I mean, he was, he was stalking me. I was, he was, I was seeing him at Walmart. I was seeing him at Kroger. He would ride by my mom's house. Once I had to call the cops. And uh, the cops pulled him over because I told him when he was driving, he just happened to be going by again. Wow. And they pulled him over. And they said, uh, we had heard that you're riding around. You don't know if you're riding around here. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not stalking her. And he's like, the cops said, well, what are the binoculars for? Because the cop come back and told me what had happened. He said, I seen the binoculars. And I was like, what are the binoculars doing in your car? Wow. And he was like, oh, well, they've been in here for a while. He said, but while you're here, can I ask you, who is that, whose red truck is that in their driveway? Wow. Oh, yeah, because everybody just rides around with binoculars right? in their car. I mean, right, right. now, if you go out to our car, we have binoculars, right? Right. <laughs> like, sure that's do. normal. Yeah. But all this time, yeah. couldn't he care less. And he didn't hunt, he didn't fish, he didn't do anything. Why you got binoculars? Why you got binoculars, Why right? you got binoculars in your car, <laughs> right? Sis. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. And so, there, at this time, um, Amanda Brady had asked me to come to church with her. And I did. I started going to... God bless her. I know, right? How could you not love me? Right? Brady? And I call her Amanda Brady. I do, too. I, it's very rare that I say Amanda. It's always Amanda Brady. I know. I say Amanda Brady. <laughs> She's our director, by the way. Right? <laughs> but she had asked me to come to church, and I did. And I was going for a couple months. And um, Todd, <laughs> he went to that same church. <clears throat> and there was one day when he had come outside of the church and he had asked me, he said, uh, where's your husband at? And I said, I have no idea. And he's like, what do you mean you don't know? And I'm like, we're not together anymore. And he's like, oh, I want to ask you out <laughs> so bad. And I said, no, no, you don't. Do not ask me out. Oh, I no. love him even more. <laughs> no. I said, no. Because I, st I was still wearing my wedding ring and my wedding band. I think it was like, I was still had that fear of divorce. I did because I, I mean, I was sure. I was so sure I did not want to be with him anymore. But I guess the whole thought of divorce was just, it was still kind of scary. But but I knew I was I was finished with that relationship. I was ready to move on to something else. So you weren't divorced yet? Nope. Sure was But definitely separated? Yes. Okay. And all this is going on. So, okay, so continue your story. Okay. So, you see, you have your ring on. And, I and, do. And, and, and he's trying to ask, ask you out. He is. And I'm like, I said, no. I said, no, sir. Oh, I love it. I said, no. Oh. So, at this day, I was leaving church. Well, he ends up following me. And I was like, I'm, this guy is not going to know where I live. He is, I don't know him like that. Right. He is not. You already got one following you. Right. <laughs> I said, no. So, I pulled over in the library parking lot. Okay. And. He started, he was, we were talking, I don't even know what we were talking about. Nothing, nothing too spectacular because I don't remember the conversation. But he gives me his business card and he's like, just call me. <laughs> I didn't give him mine. I was like, I'm not giving you my number. I oh said, my no. goodness. Business no, card. Said, yep. He's business. Full quit. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, I probably won't be calling you. 
But anyway. Oh, what, what year is this? Please? This is 2006. Oh, that's way past business card years. That was like back then. <laughs> right. Okay, that's funny. Okay. Yeah, and I still have it business card. Do too. you? I do. God bless you. I you do. are so cute. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's I do. So awesome. I still have it. Uh, <clears throat> but we had, I need to back up because my husband, my, my ex husband and I, we did try counseling, but he wouldn't participate. He wouldn't, um, like, we were, all we were asked to do was write down the flaws of each other. Like, I would write down flaws of him, he would write down flaws of me, and read John, the book of John. Okay, that's easy. That's not hard. I did that. And I come in, of course, I had a list of flaws. I mean, I'm sure you have a list of flaws, too. I mean, oh, my goodness. Oh, my husband is perfect. Mm. <laughs> Mine, too. I love you very much. <laughs> he used to pastor, by the way. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But he's got to be perfect, right? We are perfect. That's God right. Think so. That's right. God think so. Okay, so you tried marriage counseling. And we did. But obviously, I, this I person came... was a... Oh, he was our, he was the pastor of the church that started going to with Amanda Brady. Oh, okay. He was going to, he was going to counsel us. Okay. And, um, well, we went to this, this, the, the last meeting, I call it, because we didn't go anymore after this, because he had not read John, and he had, he, when he asked, he didn't come with a list of anything, and the pastor asked him, he said, well, what are her flaws? And he's like, she's perfect. There's nothing wrong with her. And he's like, you're a liar because I know better. Because if she was so perfect, you all wouldn't even be here right now. If she was so perfect. Right. So, and she wouldn't have a list of flaws if, you know, if you were perfect. So, after that, I was like, I mean, I was doing it anyway, but I just did it for, probably for his family. I thought, oh, and there was one time when they had me go to the doctor because they thought I was just depressed. That's why I wanted to leave. So, that was another thing. So. so his family blamed it on you. Oh, like yeah. You were just depressed. Yes. Everything's and then, good. And then after that, I was cheating on him with everybody. I was sleeping with everybody. So oh, that no. came after that, too. Yeah. And I just I just dealt with it. I'm like, no, God, I am not that. So so let me ask you, beloved. Yes. Okay. So were you a, a Christian before this? Mm-mm. Okay. So, so what was the... The... the deep-seated reason for, for staying with somebody who treated you my kids that was the reason I stayed but you had what you you told your parents and you said from the beginning that you had a wonderful support system you had loving, I know, I did. loving I family did. I did but see also my family my mom especially did not tell me what to do she was not that type of person to butt into my to my marriage, my relationship, my relationship with my kids. I have the best mother in the whole entire world. And she, I mean, if I went to her and said something to her or asked her, then she would tell me or give her opinion or whatever I asked for. But until then, she keeps her mouth shut. She does not say anything. And you also and I said didn't you say, didn't say I didn't say anything to her, so she didn't know. Then at the end, I did. I went to my mom, and she was kind of, she wasn't shocked, but because she knows that whenever I would go to her house with the kids, he was not around because he, you know, he was busy or whatever. But I went to her and I told her I was like, "I'm gonna leave her," and she's like, "And she was like, well, are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm okay." And I was like, "I need you to have my back," and she's like, "You know, I've got your back. You know that you're okay. You and the boys can come live here, and, you know, things like that." And I'm like, "I know." So when she said that, you knew in your heart. I mean, honestly, it was like a huge relief, like a weight had been lifted. And I don't know why I didn't go to her sooner about a lot of things because I, don't, I think it's because of embarrassment. I mean, who wants their, you know, marriage to be, you know, true, right? True. And, 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 and I mean, you honestly could say that, I mean, you stuck it out. You literally stuck it out for 10 years. I did. I did. I mean, it wasn't like. Things are good and things are bad and things are good and things no, are bad. It was, it was just kind bad. of nothingness. Yeah, it's like a plateau of nothing. Yes. I mean, basically, you had a free house, mm -hmm. free ish house. Mm -hmm. It came with <laughs> strings, but yes. but there was no rent. No rent. And no so you water, had a place no for, for, to, for your 
But even when you needed something, they weren't there to watch the boys or help or, or do anything. You did it all on your own. Right. His mom would. His mom helped a lot. Did she? She would take on uh, take uh, the kids whenever she could. Yeah, she was she was a big help. But then of course that also came with the strain, you know. So it was kind of hard because and like if I would leave my kids with their dad for if I got him there, I'm like I have to do this. You need to be here and watch the kids. Well, my kids would end up with her by the time I got home. He would be gone. So. He would be gone, so she would. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So before we go on to to the gooder and gooder, right? <laughs> what would you say to anyone, any woman battling this right now? I mean, because if, if you could tell your younger self that was going through all of this, what would you what would you tell them? Well, first, don't ignore the red flags. I mean, if there's red flags, I mean, they're gonna pop up everywhere. And that first one, I mean, you really need to think about what is going on in your life at that moment. What is going on in your marriage? What is going on in the relationship? I mean, and this could be any relationship. It could be with a parent or a child or a spouse. It could be any kind of relationship. Just, you really need to, to think and to really magnify what is going on because it's the red flags will they will just they will pop up and if you have I mean tell someone everything tell them everything great time. And good okay. tell them good tell them bad um, I mean I wished I had told my mom everything I mean she knows everything now of course but I, at that moment because I was so young I wish I had told her I was very I have to say I was very mature for my age because I think it was because our younger, I'm the oldest of four, but my baby baby sister was born when I was 13. So I was able to, and my mom was single. So I was helping her take care of, you know, oh, the twins okay. and the little baby baby. I would t actually get off the school bus, go to daycare, which was right down the street, pick her up, take her home, and, you know, make sure that they were taken care of until she got home from work. So I was very mature. My mom said I've been like that since I was young, since a kid, but I was a kid, so I thought I was just a kid, but I was very mature for my age. But and you I had a lot of responsibilities as a child. I did, I did. Even whenever the twins were born, mom would have, you know, one, my dad would work, so mom would stay home with us. She would, you know, feed one, and she would give me that one to hold <laughs> while she fed the other one, and I would feed it and burp it, you know, for, and I was four. And then she would. Oh my you know, goodness! Yeah, she would take. And then, of course, they were little bitty. They were twins, so they were teeny oh, tiny. Wow. So yeah. So I would, you know, help her, but I was. I felt that I was really mature for my age. And I, so in in being with him, and he was not mature at all. It was he was so selfish. But I would say, do not live in that. Do not. If you're not with someone who doesn't put God first, Amen to that. Then it's honestly not even a relationship that you want to even entertain. Absolutely, you just do not. Praise God. Yeah. And it took Praise me God. it took me a hot minute to figure <laughs> that one out on my own. But if you're going to bars or even work or you know anything like that to find a significant other I'm not gonna say don't <laughs> but just make sure that they do put God first amen in everything because that relationship honestly will it will probably fail I mean it's simple as that's that. the it'll, truth it'll probably amen. fail yeah amen. and it neither one my ex-husband and I were neither safe we didn't even go to church never went to church ever I think we got married in the church that's probably the only time we went to a church <laughs> Sad. So was your family, like your mom and dad when you grew up, and were, were they? Um, we didn't go to church a lot. When I went, my parents didn't. Um, when I was growing up, I, when I went to church, it was on weekends. I would stay with my grandparents, my dad's parents, and I would go to church then. My friends, I would go to church with them, and I would do, you know, vacation Bible school. I would do, you know, all that. And then as I became um, a teenager... I was probably, uh, when my parents divorced, probably, and I moved to Marion County, I never stepped foot in the church until I was older. So, so you were, when you were younger, you went to church. I did. 
You went to Vacation Bible School. I did. Right? Mm-hmm. Lots of good things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure right? Did. Vacation Bible School. Okay. They but you did snacks. Snacks and games mm-hmm. and boys. And sure did. Games and more <laughs> snacks and <laughs> yeah. pizza and whatever else. Yeah. But you didn't consider yourself safe. No. Okay. Not at all. Did your family celebrate Christmas? Yes. Did your family celebrate Easter? Yes. <laughs> but didn't consider yourself saved? No. no. Okay. I'm just saying some things, but we're just moving on. Okay. So, growing up, you helped your mom raise your brothers and sisters. Yep. So, you were kind of, you were already in that role. Yes. Before you were in that role. Yes. yes. And you say your, your parents got a divorce. Mm-hmm. So, you saw what it was like. Mm-hmm. I did. To be a single mother. I did. Amen. I did. And what did you think about that when you were a kid? Well, when I was watching my mom, I mean, I watched her struggle. I don't know if I'm going to cry. But anyway, because I, I seen her, I seen her at times when she didn't eat, so we fed. I did see times like that. Um, we knew we didn't ask her for anything, like things that we wanted, because we knew she couldn't afford it. Um. Wow. But at Christmas and stuff, we always ended up getting it somehow. Wow. We did. Um, my mom, she, I don't know, she was just amazing. It was, I've seen her, it, it, it was a struggle. She struggled so much. You know, we were the kids of, um, we lived in, you know, public housing. We were on food stamps, you know, things like that. But, I mean, we didn't, we didn't think of ourselves as, like, <laughs> poor you know, we really did. I mean, we just, we, we ate and we had, you know, what we needed. And, um, and I think maybe that was also part of why I didn't want to leave because I knew it was going to be a struggle. I knew that I would have to struggle by myself. I mean, I had my mom, my mom would move the moon for me if she had to, but like I shouldn't I have to rely on her. <clears throat> sure. <clears throat> but I know she's there. I'm living with her right this moment. <laughs> so I know she's always For a very gonna, different she, reason. Yes, but. yes. But she is, um, she, I know she'll always be there for everything. And, um, but I, I guess also part of that was I didn't want to, I didn't want to be the one to have to struggle with my kids. I didn't want my kids to have to, to have to struggle sure. with me. Um, but God, and, um, I had met my second husband, Todd Elder. <laughs> he was actually, I, him. When, I knew him when I went to church because he was actually also our handyman at the office I worked at. He would come in and fix stuff and, you know, he was, him and his brother would come in and, you know, I would see him or whatever, but, um, never really paid any attention to him because he's old <laughs> girl. I can't help believe you just said that. I was going to say, okay. Old. All right. So, all right. Okay. So, so to go back, so, so you started going to church with Amanda Brady. I did. Right. Amanda Brady. And then like, how, how many how many times did you go to church before he followed you to the um to the I had probably been going for I'd say probably about it was about three months. Three months. Okay. Yeah. So not like yeah. day one. Oh no. But three months. Yeah. And then he followed you to the library. Yes. But you still had rings on your finger. I did. All right. And I you did. weren't all the way you were separated, separated. obviously. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then um it was time to get a divorce. You were you yes. were just done. Right? Um, after, actually, Todd and I had actually started dating before I was divorced. Um, I think it was like, I don't know, a week or so after he had asked me, I finally called him. I don't know why, but I did. His business card? Yeah, I had his business card, so I gave him a call. <laughs> but what was funny was he would always know when I was at the office at work, and he would call as soon as my butt hit the chair. Huh. He would call. Huh. Like, How did you know? How did you know? He's like, I'm at the coffee club, which was was like AA. They had what? AA meetings and stuff. And yeah. And it was like okay. right down from it. You could see. And oh. That's where he was at. So he would see you pull in. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm like. It's not too stalkery. 
No. I guess if you looked out the window and saw somebody, that's not really stalking. Yeah, he was all the way at the coffee club and he would call. Okay. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm like, I haven't even put my bag down yet. <laughs> I haven't even put my bag down yet. Can you give me five minutes? Okay, so he was a handyman there he and was. he attended the church. Church, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so go. Okay. So, um, we had, we had, I'm not going to say we started dating. He had asked me to go out to eat. And I told him I would. Um, we went to Red Lobster in E-Town. Wow, he was, too. he was late picking me up. Oh. Let me tell you why. Okay. Because he fell asleep. I was like, you're not very excited. What? You fell asleep? You fell asleep? You fell asleep. You fell asleep. Because I called him, I'm like, are we still going? Cause we're going? This is the guy that followed you I know. To, to the to the library. Yeah. Calls you every day at work yes. before you even get to put your bag down. Mm -hmm. And yet here it is, the day, mm -hmm. date one, mm -hmm. and he falls asleep. Yes. And I said, talk. I said, uh, are we still going? He's like, oh yeah, I fell asleep. I'll be there shortly. <laughs> Was he playing hard to get? I, mean, I don't know what, what was no, it. No, he was a, he was a good napper then. So yeah, he was really <laughs> napping. Goodness. What happened? Oh, I can't wait to, to ask but him. Sometime, let's see. Right before we did go out on a date, um, I had went to the office and they were giving me such a hard time. Of course, his family owned it, so I was getting. Oh, out so of you're it. still? I am. I had to. I mean, I had to. So Todd's coming into the place where you worked, where your ex's family still. Well, he wasn't coming in there. Okay. He was the handyman for them. Yeah, that's what I mean. To come in there and work, yes. But this was like, I think the last time he had been there was like Oh, months, so it's not a normal thing. It's just yeah, he wasn't there like everything. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Just, it, yeah, they called him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, just, you know. Yeah. But um, but I I ended up sending not everyone. They had went to Disney or something, and I ended up sending them an email. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. I don't, I'm not going to work but they ended up calling me like a month or two later wanting me to go work for them somewhere else for another company and wow. like in their office so I went because I'm sure it was for off center camera and it wasn't for me or anything but anyway so Todd me and Todd went out on a first date um, and then that's when stuff started flaring up again with my ex-husband and you know he was following us and things like that and he followed Todd with me in the vehicle and I stopped right in the street. He's like, you will not follow me. He's like, if you want to follow her, you follow her, but you will not follow me. No matter where I'm at, well, we never seen him again after that. He, <laughs> just, yeah. he just, he was like, nope, Yay. I don't want any, I don't want any part of that. But wow. then we, we, we still had our issues, you know, him picking the kids up or not picking the kids up or being late picking them up. It was just a whole ordeal. I mean, when there were kids, it was just a ho, 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 ho thing. We kept going through one. I mean, we would go to court and child support office wasn't doing anything about him paying his child support. I mean, he's, my kids are 21 and 25 and still $10,000 behind on child support. Wow. Yeah. So it was just a constant, constant, constant in the beginning of our marriage, just dealing with that still. But, um, we had decided to get married in, I think it was January. You know when you got married. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know, when, I know the day we got married, but we had decided to actually okay. get married. I think it was like in January of 2007. We had thought about it and talked about it, and we decided like in August, that August that we were going to get married. Okay. And our pastor was like, why are you going to wait that long? And Todd's like, okay. So like we had like two weeks to get everything set up, ready to go. And we got married March 3rd, 2007. So we've been married for 18 years. Wow. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I know. So was there a big proposal or are you all no. decided? No. Nope. It's just, we're you getting married. You all are married. both so level-headed. It's hilarious. We're getting married. We're getting married. That's it. So I take it you were divorced by then. Uh, I actually, what's funny, and what's not funny, it's really not funny. My divorce was in the newspaper, and then like two, three weeks later, my marriage. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness, could y'all have like, <laughs> y'all plan that so badly. Get y'all so bad. Space that out I mean, a I had bit. filed like months and months and months before, but I, of course, I had to wait because I had the two kids, and it was just a whole ordeal between So you had to go anyways. through all the process yes. and everything. So it was like months, months, months before. So, so this man, the ex, yes, the ex, the ex, the ex man. So he, 
He just. It sounds like to me like you were a possession. Oh, I was. Yes, I was. Chelsea wife, like I was. But I was pretty, so well, you want to. I was, you know, young and pretty, and and he would like to take me, you know, wherever his friends were, you know, things like that, and like show you off. Yeah, I'm just not that type of girl. I'm like, I'd rather you not look at me. I'm <laughs> just, I'm the kind of person that wants to be in the background. <laughs> I've always been like that, <laughs> still like that. So I just, I prefer not to. Yeah, but. I need to go back to probably October of 2006. Um, it was just after Todd and I started dating. Um, I had gotten saved. Yay! Uh, yay. Woo! Praise God. Like and a month later, I was baptized. Yes. Um, at Praise the church God. I was. And, but what drew me to Todd more than anything was his smile first. <laughs> Whenever we would go out, and we wouldn't do anything, we would just, like, sit in his truck or something and just talk. And he would talk to me about God, and it was like, and this was, like, before we, I even got saved or anything. And it was, like, the most amazing. I mean, I could sit and talk for, I mean, I know I joke about how much he talks, but, I mean, I really could listen to him talk about God all day, every day. And it was, like, it was, like, and it was, I could understand. Because, you know, before, I couldn't understand. I mean, people would preach and, you know, say things, and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It was just so hard for me to understand. But he would say things that I, I could understand. That's and, you know, and he was still new at this, too. But he was so knowledgeable. He's, he just knew so much. I mean, he'd only been saved like a year, I think. Wow. Okay. But he just knew so much. I mean, he just took it all in. He's like a sponge. He just took it in and took it in and took it in. And, I'm, I mean, it was, it w really was amazing. And that's, that's why I married him. Wow, does he know that? Yeah, he knows. That's good. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's he so knows. awesome. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. So, both of you were saved. Mm -hmm. Both of you know God. Yes. Have a relationship with God. Yes. Very different. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, what's the difference in your marriage relationship now versus prior? Everything. Um, one, we both put God first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God first. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, my husband actually loves me. And my oh. husband, he tells me probably 600 times a day. <laughs> and it never gets old. It really does. It never gets old. Oh, my goodness. And every single time he says it, even when it's like the very last time of the day, I still feel it from him. Because, you know, I mean, love is an action word. But, I mean, I actually feel it whenever he tells me. It's not like a... An emotion. Yeah, or... Just a, a word or just an empty word. Yeah, an empty word. Amen. It's just I I know it and I feel it and he puts me above not above God but he puts me above everything. Everything else he'll put me me and the kids or I mean I can tell him I want something he's like no 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 and I end up getting it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but and. Us being able to worship together, because I, I mean, honestly, it would it before my marriage before I would never. If I had become saved, and I just don't think I would. I mean, I don't think I would be able to say anything about God or anything in front of me. It's not he's not. I don't think he's atheist or anything like that. Is just not participating or or anything like that. It's just I just don't think I could. And with Todd. You know, I can say anything I want about God at any time of day, and he's game on. Let's go, <laughs> and we're both, you know, in conversation about it. And I can come to him with, you know, because I mean, I'm not new, but I mean, there's some things I don't understand, and I can go to sure. Todd and ask him about it, and he'll either say I don't know, or he'll say, or he'll give me, you know, an answer something that I understand. So he's also like, I guess you could say, my mentor as well. As my husband, as far as you know, still you know worshiping the Lord, and um, he just loves me. Praise that! And so, I love him just as much. Praise God! Amen. And you guys are so cute together. Everybody just so loves cute. us. They I just know. Love I mean, us just so much. you can just see your relationship. You can see and feel that you guys are both just happy. Yes. And We're all um, so happy. 
Um, word keeps coming to my mind, settled. Yeah. That you guys are good in yes, your relationship. We are. Amen. We are. And uh, <laughs> I don't feel like there's, I don't see or I don't feel like there's any control over uh -huh. you. No. And no. you don't control him. No. No. You don't manipulate him. No. He doesn't manipulate you. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those you don't know, Todd Elders, you're probably not from around here because yeah. he's like, exactly. he's the unofficial mayor. He's the unofficial mayor of Marion County. You are correct. Him and Pastor, I think they could just, you know. Yes, they could wrap it up. <laughs> yep, sure could. So let me ask you this. Is he loving? Yes. Is he kind? Yes. Is he compassionate? Yes. Is he understanding? Yes. What else we got? Is he fun? Oh, yes. <laughs> Is he a family man? Yes, definitely. And a godly man? Yes. Amen. That's first. Praise yes. God. Yes. And are you happy? I am so happy. Praise God. Yes. I Praise do. God. Boy. I didn't think, you know, it's just, um, and you know, I think that before I was saved, Todd and I did split up a couple times before I was even saved because he had that conviction. Because uh -huh. one, I was just separated. I wasn't divorced. I was just that we weren't, I don't know who's going to be watching this. We weren't having sex or anything like that yet. It wasn't anything like that, but we would split up. And he would split up from me because, you know, he did have that conviction. And then, I don't know, we just ended up, I think it may have been after I was saved, maybe, that we had come back together the last time, maybe. Um, I don't know, but it, it was different because, um, I wanted to grow. I wanted to grow with him, and I knew, I think I knew in that moment that I wanted to grow with him and um, and to be with him, like, forever. And I knew that I just didn't think, you know, God could possibly put somebody like that in my life. I mean, it's, it's and it's so weird how God works because Todd is 14 years older than I am, okay? <laughs> when he was graduating high school, I was three. I was three years old wow. when he graduated high school. Wow. And, you know, wow. I, had to, I had to wait all these years. <laughs> like, couldn't you just wait until I was, like, 18 and then, you know, done it. But then you think back, you know what? He was with Shannon, and he had his own kids at that time. And, and battling his, his own stuff. And he was battling his own stuff. And I would not have put up with a drug addict or an alcoholic. I would not have done it. Um, but... He had to go through everything he went through. I had to go through everything I went through before we could come together. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Perfect and, timing. Yes. For him to know how to have a relationship with me, with God, and how for me to have a relationship with him and with God all at the same time. Because, you know, he had his kids at the time. I had my kids at the time. And, and you know, he had his own thing. So God put us together right when we were supposed to be put together. And I believe that. Even though... It's all God's perfect timing, and I know people will look down, which, and I don't, I don't care anymore, you know, because I was just separated at the time. Um, I wasn't divorced yet when we um, started seeing each other, and um, and it, it, it's all God. It's Amen. still all God. It, Amen. It is because God has the sense of humor to put us together because. <laughs> He knows I want to knock him out sometimes, and and I just love him so much at the same time. <laughs> and God has a sense of humor for sure. Amen. But you all are an amazing couple. We are. We really. I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but, but yeah, you we are. really are. You are. I mean, we you really know. are. So, so for anybody who 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 is who is battling or going through the things that that sis went through, um, having issues in your marriage, yeah. you know. These are people to come and talk to, and it's their last name isn't just elders. They're also elders. Right. Right. <laughs> they're people that you can actually come and, and talk to here at, at the worship center, and um, and it's not just empty advice. It's what they went through, what right. they battled through, and what God delivered them through. Yes. Amen. And um, having having Jesus in your life, having a relationship with God changes everything. Right. Amen. It does. And I wanted to say that, you know, um, Todd was also married before, and his ex-wife, Shannon, is probably one of my best friends today. <laughs> I love her so much. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm sweetest. Oh, my goodness. She is like, she has, you know, the heart of a saint. She is just, absolutely, she would do anything for me, and I would do anything for her. 
Yeah, you all and not only is, have a relationship, but but your family is yeah, incredible because I mean, yeah. you're all together. Yep, and um, with uh, you know with all of us, it's just it really is amazing because I mean she would I mean when my kids were younger, like you know she would pick up my kids from school, you know things like that. It's just I mean she absolutely does have a heart of a saint. I mean absolutely, God does amazing things in relationships. No matter what relationship it is, God can do really. He can do just amazing Amen, things. Amen, glory. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. <laughs> She's just too cute. And uh, so, unless you have anything else to say, we'll. Oh, I don't think so. I'm good. Thank you all so much for joining us. And again, God's Hand Ministry. I'm recovered, and um, you are more than welcome to come anytime. And mm, and they yes. will be happy. Yes. Happy to talk to you and and share and um, encourage you. But number one thing, the only thing that changes everything is knowing <laughs> it's receiving Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit comes within us. Amen. Amen. He becomes God within us. And having a relationship with God changes everything. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much for joining us. We love you. And God bless you. <laughs> Rolling chairs. <laughs>